What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with another tutorial in Scrap Mechanic and today we're going to look at doing a simple GPS tracking robot. So I've done a few different devices that use GPS to track movement and a lot of you guys have been asking, can you explain how to do this in a little bit more detail? So I figured today we'll set up a very simple GPS tracking hover bot that I guess can just hover across the ground. And the reason it's going to have to hover is because we're going to do it with a translation method. So there's really two methods to do GPS tracking. One method is the translation method where your vehicle always points in the same direction, kind of like the glass elevator I did a while ago. And then simply the vehicle kind of slides between points, almost like strafing. It doesn't ever rotate its body. And then the other way to do GPS tracking is to actually calculate the vector between your current position and where you want to go, rotate the body in the proper direction, and then move in that direction. So that is a little bit more of an advanced method, and I have been working on some creations that actually use this method, which kind of makes them feel more realistic because they actually turn towards the object. But we'll look at that at a later date. For today, I just want to look at how you could set yourself up a really simple robot if you wanted to move, let's say, from this GPS coordinate to this GPS coordinate and have it do it automatically. So the first thing we've got to do is build a really simple hovering robot platform that we can also use for all our circuitry. And we'll actually do this excessively large just so we have lots of room and uh, make sure it's easy to look at. I like marking out the middle just so you can really, you know, tell where everything is. And then at each corner, uh, we'll just put a little pillar up and then we'll put a gimbal thruster. And because the thrust is going to be above the center of mass, this will actually be really, really easy to keep stable. It, it should automatically keep itself stable if we can just find the, here we go, gimbal thruster. So we're just going to put one of these on top of each and they'll always point up. So pretty simple stuff there. And then of course we need a uh, sensor in the middle. We'll do this super old school. We're not going to do any sort of advanced hovering because, you know, why, why bother? So we'll just do this with a really simple... Uh, sort of downwards looking sensor set that to five and we'll put another gimbal thruster in the middle above that And this sensor will really simply just straight activate that and problem solved All right, so we'll just grab a switch and we'll use this switch for the remainder of our thrusters and This should be a really basic hovering platform. Hopefully it's not too aggressive. Okay It's not even powerful enough to lift off perfect So now we can adjust our thrust and to do that all we got to do is actually feed a number value to our gimbal thrusters So we can just take this and feed this sort of Counter block to it, which of course has a value of zero right now And then of course we just take a really simple tick button So you guys might have noticed these buttons in the mod pack. It's a tick button I've talked about it before but really simply it only sends one tick at a time Which is how all the number logic works. So they're super super useful when you're dealing with number logic and of course the default power on these thrusters is 100 so we'll just paint this pink so it's 100 in value and then we've got 10 here and one but we'll paint this pink to get 100 click it once now those thrusters have 100 total power and uh, actually we'll power the middle one as well with it and uh okay 200 so 200 is a little bit too much too much power there so we'll bring it down from 200 uh, we'll bring it down negative 10. So 190, 180, 170, 160. Of course, we can always adjust this later. So we just want to... So 170 is too low. So let's bring it up a little bit. There we go. So that should be a good uh, level for hovering. And when that middle thruster shuts off, perfect. So it's a really old school hovercraft, obviously. But you know what? This will work for exactly what we're doing. And you can see, even if we hit this, it uh, it doesn't ever lose stability. Because the weight is always below it. So it'll kind of just float around. So it's a pretty good hovercraft and we could use this as our sort of demo example. Now to set up a basic GPS translation system for any sort of drone or robot or anything you want to do, there's really two elements to it. And one is pointing yourself in the right direction. So always pointing yourself in the zero degree direction, whether it's the front of your vehicle, the side of your vehicle, whatever. And the second component to it is making sure that you understand which direction is which in translation. So the first thing we're going to do is set this vehicle up to always point north. And to do that, we need to grab the XO meter. So we just take our XO meter. We can really put it, I mean, anywhere you want on the creation, but let's just put it here and we'll place it down and we've got to set it to compass, I believe is what it's called. Compass. There you go. So that'll output the compass value. And actually, just for the purposes of this video, let's put three number blocks here and sort of show what they're actually outputting. So of course, we've got the ones position, which is orange. We've got the red position, which is tens, and then the pink position, which is hundreds. So this will display a three digit number now coming off of this compass. And uh, of course it's zero because we're lined up in the zero direction. But if we take our platform and we rotate it, you can see now it's 89, should be around 90 degrees in this direction. 
uh, 180 is that way, negative 90 is that way, and 0 degrees is this way. But we don't really care about the negatives and positives because all we need to do now is compare this against two values. So we're going to put down two math blocks. We're going to crouch and press E just because it cycles backwards and the comparisons are all at the very end of the math block. So we're going to put one comparison in each direction. And you can see one's greater than and one's less than, so not a big deal. And we'll paint this white. That way it is the white dot on these two math block connections. So we'll hook the compass into both. All right, so then we're going to compare the compass position to two individual counter blocks and we'll attach them to both. Now we do have to paint these counter blocks black, so they'll be the black dot on the comparison. And in this case right now, they're both set to zero, but this means the compass would really have to be exactly lined up. There's always a bunch of decimals associated with this compass value and it'll never be exactly zero really. So you don't want to compare it to just two zeros because then you'll always be kind of moving back and forth and it'll never really stay lined up. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to set one of them to one and one of them to negative one. So we'll just attach a tick button to this one and this is greater than. So if the compass is greater than one degree and then we can remove that tick button. And then on this side, we want it to be if the compass is less than negative one degree and we'll just paint this brown here. And there we go. Now this should be a value of negative one. Of course, if you don't know what the values are, you can always hook them up into a number block, just a single digit. And you can see we've got one here and negative one here. So now the compass is saying, okay, 89, 89 is greater than one. So this gate is now lit up and it means basically we need to rotate back in the right direction. So we're just going to add a couple of Pico thrusters here and this will be our rotational directional stuff. So we'll just put them, you know, on the backs of these pillars just like this and it shouldn't be a problem. We'll set them all to the lowest power. And we know now, so if the compass is 89 degrees, it's greater than 1. That means we have to rotate to the right because 0 is in that direction. So we can just hook this up to that one, hook this up to that one, and that should slowly rotate us in the right direction. And then the other one in the left direction will be these two. And actually, we can probably increase that just a little bit. These are really, really slow. So let's just increase that a little bit like that. And this one as well. And that one. And this one. All right, perfect. So it should rotate itself to be vertical north, zero degrees, and you can see it's actually stopped rotating. And if we take this and we place it even completely backwards, uh, we just got to make sure to turn it on. Perfect. And you can see it's going to start rotating right away. It's actually negative, so it's going in that one direction. When you put it at 180 degrees, sometimes it's negative 180, sometimes it's positive 180. It doesn't really matter. It's going to rotate in the shortest direction using this method. So it's really kind of cool and it'll always rotate until it points itself back at that zero direction. You could, of course, rotate this compass so your creation will point in any direction you want, but really simply for this, now we know that it's always going to point between one and negative one, and even if we, you know, hit it with our hammer and rotate it, you can see it'll fight us and it'll put itself back to that proper direction. So really, really simple stuff and very important when you're doing GPS by the translation method. So the second set of GPS tracking obviously involves doing the coordinate system. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're not going to look at doing anything with height. We're just going to do X and Y translation. Obviously, this is a hovercraft. It doesn't really care about height. We're just going to have it slide in the X and Y direction. In order to do that, we need two things on this creation. One is we need to know our current GPS coordinates, where this creation thinks it is itself. And the second thing we need is the destination coordinates that we're giving it. So for the current coordinates, we're going to use a couple more XO meters here. And we'll just put them onto this sort of center pillar. Now we're going to set one to be pause X, I believe. So if we can find it here, pause X. And we're going to set another one to be pause Y. Now I know in pretty much every GPS video I've ever posted, people always say that I have X, Y, and Z mixed up. And Y should be up and Z should be distance like depth. But the reason I use X and Y the way they are is because you can see in terms of the way the mod pack handles it, X and Y are your grid coordinates as if you're looking straight down onto the creation. So I use X and Y that way and then I just use Z for height. Really, we could use A for altitude or H for height, you know, whatever we want. It's completely arbitrary. But regardless, that is why I use X and Y the way I do. So we've got our two XO meters there. It's important you put them attached to the same block. That way they kind of read the same GPS coordinate. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You can put your X meter over there and your Y meter over in this corner. It just means, you know, you're technically reading a slightly different position. You're not exactly at that coordinate. So on the other side, we need two values to compare against. And to do that, we'll just use two of these counter blocks and we'll hook these counter blocks up to a four digit number display. With the current size of the scrap mechanic world, four digits is enough. And we'll of course paint them. So we've got a ones position, our tens position, our hundreds position, and our thousands position. And we just hook this up to every single one of those. 
Now, of course, we can put some buttons down and we can have one button hooked into each, allowing us to control it. And we can just paint those buttons to set our coordinates. Now, actually, let's find out where we're at here. We're at 1605, negative 750. So let's go to that here. Let's just set this up. So 1605, we'll paint that. And negative 750. So we got to go negative... Uh, 1,000 and negative 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then negative 50, correct? Negative 750, perfect. So when we're all said and done, this should try and move to that position. So now all we have to do is compare our current position marked by these two meters against our destination position, which is set by these blocks here. And we can do a straight comparison. We could just plug in a bunch of, you know, greater than and less than signs and do that. But then we'd have no tolerance on it, which means it would always try and move to that exact coordinate. And just like the compass, when you have a bunch of decimals, it basically means your creation is always going to be sliding around. So we don't really want it to do that. We want it to get to the coordinate. And when it's close enough, we want it to stop. So we want to set up some tolerances. And to set up tolerances, all you really need to do is actually subtract the one value from the other. So we're going to set up two subtractions like this. And we want our current position to be what we're pulling away from the destination. So our current position will paint black to be the second number. And our destination will paint white to be the first number. So we'll do X on the top minus uh, position X, which is this outside one here. And Y on the bottom. So we can connect those in just like that. And actually right now, I don't really have our current position marked. So let's just put a number display for that as well. So we can see what our current position is. And we'll just uh, paint that. All right, there we go. So we've got that painted. And we'll put Y on the bottom again, just like this. And we'll put X on the top. All right, perfect. So now basically what these two blocks are doing is they're doing the math on this stuff. So the top block is going to be saying, okay, my destination is 1605. 1605 minus 1657 is negative 52. And that's what this block is saying. So now instead of comparing the current position, which is greater and which is less than, all we got to do is compare these values against the tolerances that we want. So just like we did with the compass before, we set up two comparison blocks. So we've got one on either side of these, and we'll just set one to be greater than, one to be less than. All right, and we'll paint our subtraction blocks white, feed it into both comparisons on either side, and then we'll put down two counter blocks to be our two tolerances, just like we did before with the compass. And we'll just put them into both. It doesn't really matter. You can have the same tolerance in both X and Y. And now, just like before, we've got the same comparison. So here it's saying, okay, our result is negative 52. Negative 52 is less than zero, so therefore we got to move in some direction. And here on the other side, it's doing negative 750 minus negative 806, which actually ends up being a positive number. It's positive 56. And it's saying, okay, positive 56 is greater than zero. Therefore, we light up this block. Now, we want to have some tolerances. Let's do a one block tolerance again. So we'll just put that into the counter, one block, and onto this other counter, we'll put in a negative one. Perfect. And of course, we can hook up a number display to both of those just to make sure they're connected correctly. So there we go. So on the one side, we've got a tolerance of one. The other side, we've got a tolerance of negative one. And just like with the compass position, we could adjust those tolerances to be plus or minus five, plus or minus 10, whatever you want and whatever works for your creation. But at least with the plus or minus one tolerance, you eliminate the room for all those decimals. And in fact, we could do a decimal tolerance. We could go plus 0.5 or plus 0.1 if we really wanted to make it, you know, super precise. But Plus or minus one block is a pretty decent thing. Now, the final thing really that we have to do is just hook these four gates into our four directional thrusters. So we're going to actually put our directional thrusters down. We'll use Pico thrusters again, and we'll just put them at the center of each side. There we go. So now here's kind of the interesting part, which is understanding which direction is which. So on the X size, it says we're at 1653 and we want to go 1605. Now, we know 1605 is set to be that sort of coordinate position over there. So on the X side, that means this one needs to push us that way, and this one needs to push us that way. And it's just looking at which comparison is lit up based on the direction we need to go in. And in the Y direction, same sense, we know 750 is right there, negative 750, and we know this gate here is lit up. So this gate would go to this direction, and this gate should go to this direction. And now, really simply, we've created the most basic GPS translating drone. And you can see, oh, we've got these thrusters set really, really high. Well, that's fine. We'll just go past it. Yeah, it's it's let's just okay let's let's slow them it's gonna come back you know what let's it's fine see those, those they're set a little a little too high it's just overshooting a little bit too much let's just put this over here on the lift 
Let's reduce these thrusters. Of course, you could have all these connections hooked in through gates, whatever you want to do, but I really just wanted to show you guys a really simple example of how to do some GPS tracking sort of translation navigation with built-in tolerances. This is very similar to how I did the glass elevator and the GPS delivery drone. Obviously, they have a few more elements built into them, some extra controls, some of the sequencing stuff for, you know, when to drop the package, stuff like that. But it is running on a very similar principle to this, and I thought it would be super useful for all you guys who are asking and want to see a tutorial on how to do this, just to be able to set up a very, very basic, you know, hovering platform with some really basic GPS tracking. And I know it might look a little bit complicated, but if you go through the steps in this tutorial, I'm sure you could follow along and understand just how to set up some super basic GPS stuff. And it's really, really awesome. Now, of course, there is a live update on this, which means if, you know, for example, we take this and set it to, uh, you know, negative 1000 right away it's going to start moving and of course there's no collision detection so we're probably just going to run into that wall so uh, let's actually go the other way here 2000 so we're going to end up somewhere over there and you know what we can just go up like 650 uh actually that was probably a bad idea let's go negative 850 so it'll slide around it'll get back to its destination coordinate but no matter what we do it'll always try and match these coordinates here to the coordinates that it's currently at within this tolerance plus or minus one and of course it does that by keeping itself always pointed to the zero degree direction so really really simple example of how to do a gps tracking system i hope this helps out all you guys who are really trying to understand just how i've been doing some of this gps stuff now of course you could take this and extrapolate it a little bit further do a lot of cool stuff with it for example you could just use this as an indicator to point in which direction you want to go in and not actually drive for you so let me know, of course, in the comments down below if there's anything that you'd like me to clarify a little bit more in this tutorial. Hopefully, I can try and help clear it up. And while you're at it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.